today we are looking at the spatial variations of vegetation that exist in a volcanic landscape. Our case study is the magnificent landscape of the Tongariro National Park in New Zealand. This landscape has numerous volcanoes including Mount Tongariro, Mount Narahoe and Mount Ruapehu. The first pattern I want to cover is that of altitudinal zonation. This diagram shows the zones of different forest types found in New Zealand as altitude increases. At high altitudes, vegetation types are generally shorter and sparser. Plant life gets shorter and sparser until eventually only ice and snow is found on the bare rocks. At lower altitudes, the climate is generally warmer, so the vegetation is characterised by large forest trees. This is because air cools as it rises, so areas of higher altitude have colder temperatures. We call the change of temperature as air rises the adiabatic lapse rate. Generally, average daily temperatures fall about 0.6 degrees for each 100 vertical metres. So let's take a closer look at the interactions vegetation has with soil, relief and climate to produce these patterns. At high altitudes, wind speeds have high velocities, and the temperatures are cold. Parent volcanic material dominates. Further, rates of condensation increase as temperatures fall, so rainfall also increases with altitude. Only the hardiest organisms can survive here, such as this moss located at 1650 metres on Mount Ruapehu. Mountainous areas with steep slopes have high rates of erosion. Any loose material is quickly carried down slope, thus soils are thin. Even at this altitude, there are signs that plants are clinging to the bare rock. Just in the crack here, we've got some grass, and there's some very thin soil that's formed in between the cracks of this volcanic rock. At an altitude of 1200 metres, soils are thin, but are still deeper than they are higher up the mountain. Here, there are numerous species of small plants growing, such as mountain anaka, snow totara, bog pine, Tussock grass, mountain toa toa, and flowering plants such as the mountain daisy. In the summer, there is a spectacular display of alpine flowers. These plants trap silt and ash that have been transported by wind, mountain streams, or melting ice, and themselves add organic matter. They act to further protect the surface from erosion. Mountain beech is also found here. However, at this altitude, their growth is stunted. The mountain beech grows from the 700 metre mark up to the tree line, and can grow up to 15 metres tall. This is the smallest of the beech species in New Zealand. Another interesting tree found here is the conical shaped New Zealand cedar. This tree can be found even at altitudes of 1200 metres and they can live as long as 1,000 years. Around 900 metres, beech forest dominates. Beech trees are evergreen broadleaf trees with small rounded leaves, as you can observe here, on the forest floor. At this altitude, temperatures are still cold, but are much more acceptable, and soils are becoming deeper. Towns such as Waiuru are at a similar altitude to this. New Zealand has five species of beech tree, the red beech, the silver beech, black beech, hard beech and mountain beech. At this site we find mountain beech and the larger silver beech which can grow to 25 metres. Silver beech enjoys the cool temperatures and wetter climates that exist at this altitude. One tree that must be avoided here is the Bushman's Lawyer. Many a hiker has been caught by its bark. Ah! Oh! Oh my goodness! Look at that cut! It was done by this! This evil plant is the bush lawyer. 
Beware of this plant, it will cut you. You can also find here the Rangiora tree, more affectionately known as the Bushman's Friend. You can imagine from these broad leaves why many hiker has found it useful. Mountain cabbage trees, flaxes, Hall's totara and other species are also found here. The red beech is the largest beech tree. It grows to 35 meters but prefers the warmer temperatures at lower altitudes. At lower altitudes, from sea level to 650 meters, podocarp forest dominates. Podocarps are conifers that are distinguished from pines because they bear small fruit instead of cones. These forests are stratified with emergent podocarps over 30 meters tall dominating. Podocarps include some of New Zealand's largest tree species such as the totara, the matai or black pine, the myro or brown pine, the kahekatea or white pine, the maori and the rimu. These trees live to be hundreds of years old. Rimu is the dominant podocarp in the central North Island forests. Kahekatea is New Zealand's tallest species, with one tree reputedly to have been up to 68 metres tall. It prefers swampy soils and is often found growing on the floodplains and rivers. Many of these trees have epiphytes growing on them. Epiphytes are plants that grow on other plants, such as these ones here. The next layer is the canopy, which is trees that grow to about 20 metres. Examples of this include the Hinau, the Rewarewa and the Pukatea. The Pukatea is unique, it is the only New Zealand native that has buttress roots, which is similar to the species that usually frequent tropical rainforests. Below this is the subcanopy, which includes species such as the Mahoe or whitey wood, tree ferns such as the Ponga, Mimica and Theki, the Lancewood, cabbage trees. Below this is an assortment of small species no taller than 5 metres, such as the Horopito. The Horopito is a shrub that is also known as pepperwood because of its reddish leaves, which when eaten they leave a peppery taste in the mouth. This little beauty is called the Horopito tree. You can identify it by its uh, reddish leaves. Now, the, uh, it's also in Maori it's known as the Horopito and the English name for this is called the Pepperwood and the reason why it's called this is because when you chew it it's got a very peppery taste and quite frankly it is more like eating a chilli and I'll give you a little demonstration here alright this one here is probably not very um, <laughs> environmentally friendly, friendly. Awesome. but um, my goodness <laughs> now don't swallow this okay don't do this at home. Now when you first just... Oh, gosh, I'm going to spit this out. Many juvenile trees such as the young Myro that you can see here growing close proximity to its mother tree are growing in this layer. They're waiting for a gap to open up so they can compete for the sunlight. On the forest floor there are mainly mosses and ferns such as hound's tongue fern, the crown fern and kidney fern. There is a lot less sunlight penetrating down here. These lowland forests are home to numerous native bird species including the kiwi, the tui, bellbird, the kareru or native pigeon, fantails, the North Island tomtit, silver eyes and the North Island robin. On the flatter land at lower altitudes, erosion rates are much slower and deposition of alluvium by rivers and flood occurs. Thus soils are often deeper and more fertile than higher up. In this volcanic environment, there may be alternating layers of ash laid down from historic volcanic eruptions. On the forest floor, there is a thick layer of decaying plant and animal matter, we call this humus. Below that is the topsoil. 
you have to dig a lot deeper before you get to the bedrock below. 